Well, there was no controversy around this movie at all, so I say we just get into it. What's up, guys? My name's Crispy, and today we are taking a look at the Super Mario Brothers movie. It is directed by Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelinek. I hope I'm getting that name right. They are mostly known for their work on the show Teen Titans Go, which I have lots and lots of thoughts of, which I won't get into here. One of these guys also directed Teen Titans Go to the Movies, which was a surprisingly decent movie as far as I'm concerned. This movie sees the beginning of the on-screen adventures of the Super Mario Brothers. They're trying to get their living going as plumbers. They fall into a pipe. They get separated. Luigi is kidnapped by Bowser and Mario meets Princess Peach, who is working to defend her kingdom from the Koopa Army's onslaught. They have a common cause and they go at it for the sake of kingdom and family. So yeah, this movie, <laughs> lots and lots of things going into it before it came out. Lots of people were having doubts about this movie as early as the casting choices were announced. For me, the doubts started as early as when they announced that Illumination were the people who were gonna be making this movie. And um, I don't know what your thoughts about Illumination are, whatever they are, please comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. I think most of the movies Illumination has given us are just bad, honest to God. And I did not have good feelings when I heard that they were gonna be the ones making the Mario movie. I didn't have good feelings with the casting choices. And I especially didn't have good feelings after what happened with the original Super Mario Brothers movie, which honest confession here, I actually liked that movie as a kid. But nowadays I, along with a lot of other people, consider it one of the worst movies ever made. So Nintendo had quite the task on here. It was a redemption arc with a lot going against them. And on top of that, you are making a cinematic adaptation of a great and fun video game franchise. I mean, the Super Mario franchise is my favorite video game franchise out there. It's only real competition for me is the Soulsborne franchise. These are just fun game. Super Mario 64 was my first experience with a 3D platformer. Well, actually my second experience. Kingdom Hearts was my first experience now that I remember it. But it's such an amazing game. One of my favorites, if not my favorite period. Super Mario Sunshine after that, also a masterpiece. Super Mario Galaxy, I played that game more times than I can count. Mario Kart, so fun. This is just a fun, 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 fun franchise. As long as the Mario games are fun, as long as they give you a fun experience with fun physics and animation, you're good. And the franchise has done so well because it has known its strengths and it is focused on those strengths. And thank God this movie did it too because we got a good, fun Super Mario Brothers movie and Illumination made a good movie for once. Getting right into the voice acting, uh, Chris Pratt as Mario. I thought he was fine. Aside from the moments where he was straight up sounding like Linda from Bob's Burgers, I thought he did fine. If anything, I think whoever made those trailers owes him an apology because I swear to God, they just deliberately mined for his worst delivered lines and put them out there for everybody to see just to get the Twitter trolls and the memeable moment going. I swear they did that on purpose and whether or not they did, they owe Chris Pratt an apology because he was fine. He was fun in this role. Personally, and this is just one of many reasons I wish the late great Bob Hoskins were still alive. God mother wow. rest that man's soul. I feel like he would have done a better job because this Mario is more suited to a more gravelly actor who can carry frustration, but also adventurousness and curiosity. That kind of childlike wonder we often associate Mario with. And I know a lot of people were upset that Charles wasn't cast to play Mario as he usually does. And I get that. Per personally, I feel like voice actors really need to be given more credit and more limelight for all the work that they do and all the talent that they have. But I can imagine that his voice, with all that dialogue in a feature-length film, probably would have gotten grading after a bit. Plus, I keep hearing that he can't really hold the voice for long, so I get why they didn't cast him. So Mario aside, all the other casting choices were very good too. Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach, good. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, good. But the MVPs are Charlie Day as Luigi, who is straight up 
perfect. And Jack Black as Bowser, who of course is freaking great. I love what they do with Bowser in this movie. I love how they bring him back and forth from genuinely cool and threatening to simping over Peach. He basically feels like a toxic COD gamer put into a super villain's body. And I feel like that tone is just perfect for the kind of character Bowser is especially in this movie. The one exception to the good acting, though, is Fred Armisen as Cranky Con, who I honestly thought was just kind of lame. And again, hate to say it, Bob Hoskins would have killed it in this role. God, I miss that man. The animation in this movie is really good. They have an Easter egg for any Mario fan out there, like every second. Whatever you do, don't play a drinking game off of the Easter eggs. You, you will die, it's a guarantee. They have Rainbow Road, they have so many of the classic themes, and the soundtrack does a great job of remixing the classic themes that you would recognize from the games. They even introduce Mario and Luigi with an homage to the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Yeah, they go that hard when they really don't need to, and I love them for it. And it doesn't feel like it comes from a place of cynicism either. This movie feels like it was made by Mario fans for Mario fans, and it feels all the richer for it. That being said, uh, for anybody who is coming here for more of like an intellectually stimulating, challenging, philosophically and morally deep movie like we got with, say, uh, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, these are the guys who gave us the minions. Yeah, I don't know what you're expecting to find here. But again, the movie is fun, even if it's not quite as fun as it could have been. So for those who've seen the trailers and know the concept, you probably get that Peach does not get kidnapped this time, which I think is fine. I like the characterization of Peach as an action girl. It kind of harkens back to her portrayal in the Super Mario Brothers Power comics, which I personally think is still the best storytelling the Mario franchise has ever done. But then they kidnap Luigi, and Luigi being kidnapped means that we really don't get a lot of time with him, which is especially disappointing for two reasons. One, because Charlie Day as Luigi, again, he's so damn good, and they don't use him as much as they should. And on top of that, he and Chris Pratt as Mario have such a good chemistry. Both of these characters are easily at their best when they are together on screen, and they spend most of the movie not together on screen. What's up with that? And I get it. The kidnapped character is a classic trope in the Mario franchise. But if you're going to go that way, either have Peach get kidnapped, you know, play the trope straight, or don't kidnap anybody. Honestly, Bowser in this movie is entertaining enough and enough of a threat for there to be a credible struggle without the movie having to resort to kidnapping. Like, if you gotta kidnap Luigi, maybe do what the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe did, you know, have the character get rescued relatively early, I dare say, in the first act, but then, like, Mario and Luigi can agree, you know, we've seen what Bowser can do, and we can't let these people suffer for it. We've gotta help them, that's what good people do, and then the majority of the movie can be focused on the conflict with Bowser, on fighting his armies, on going from world to world to contend with the Koopa army. That would be sick. But really thinking about it, aside from that, there are only two other real problems I have with this movie, and they're not even that big, but I still gotta point them out. One of them is the pacing. They go from point A to point B pretty fast in this movie. Now, I understand that, you know, they made this movie partially for kids. Kids have very short attention spans, so you gotta keep that short. And I think in keeping that in mind, they did a good job here. I feel like the painstaking efforts which they went to to keep this movie short really show in the pacing. And I think that's a shame because I think the movie could have been better for that. Another thing is they, oh my God, they, I complimented the movie soundtrack already, but I really wish movies would stop doing this thing where they just throw pop culture songs in there for the sake of pop culture songs. I think the most cringe example of this is when they have a training montage for Mario and they give the scene holding out for a hero. Guys, when are movies going to learn that you can't top what Shrek 2 did for that song? Just give up. Just let that song rest at its peak. But when those are the only real complaints I can come up with, and when those complaints don't even bother me as much, aside from... Uh, the relative lack of screen time, the high and mighty, great, 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 great King Babam gets. 
For those of you who've already seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. For the, aside from the lack of screen time he gets, and aside from those problems, I really did enjoy this movie. I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate what it did with the challenge that it was met against. The Mario franchise has been around for roughly four decades now. It is an old franchise, and because of that, you've got a very large fan base to market this movie to. You've got the newer fans, the kids who were just getting into it, and you've got the older fans who are going to come here for the memories and the nostalgia. And I think for the most part, they do a really good job of making a movie that both of those audiences can enjoy. That is not an easy task to accomplish, and I am very happy and very impressed that they accomplished it to the level that they did here. I think that this is a really fun movie, and I would love to see more movies like this, and I would love to see them franchise this, honestly. We have been getting good video game movies lately. We've got the Sonic movies, which are, you know, flawed but still fun. We've got this movie, which is also fun. I really hope that Nintendo carries this into a cinematic universe. Like, you could bring Zelda in, you could bring Star Fox in, you could bring Metroid in. You can bring in so many of the best video game franchises out there, franchise it, make it a cinematic universe, bring it up to the level of, say, like, just bring us a Smash movie, do it. I think with the level that this movie performed at, I think they could do it. Oh, and before I conclude this review, I gotta give a shout out to two characters in this movie. The first is the nihilistic Luma, as adorable as any other Luma in the franchise, but also just saying the darkest shit you can imagine a kid's character saying in the most adorable way possible. He's one of Bowser's hostages, and he's basically hyping up the fact that they're all going to be ritualistically executed. And he's like mad excited for it because he thinks that it's the only comfort left for him. Like, yeah, goddamn, that Luma went hard. And second is the Yoshi cameo, which uh, kind of leads to an awkward stinger. But yeah, those are my two cents on it. I really enjoyed this movie. I'd recommend it to anyone. I'm happy to give it a nice solid 82% on the crispy meter, taking it out of the oven. Nice, nostalgic, fun ride. It had a challenge ahead of it, but it beat that challenge by focusing on what makes Mario great. And I think that's pretty damn cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, come join the Crispy Kingdom. We are all royals here. I also have a gaming channel and a clip channel and a Twitch. Mad thanks to the best editor ever, The Dark Gale. You can also find the links to the Global Nerds podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you guys so, so much for helping us pass over 1 million streams. You can also find a link to a short film that I acted in titled One Heart. And of course, um, I feel like I've been kind of lagging on this. I want these review videos to be a conversation. I would love to hear what you guys think about this movie. So I'm going to ask you right here, right now, uh, what video game movies do you want to see in the future? What do you want to see Nintendo do next? What Nintendo IPs would you love to see hit the silver screen? I'd love to know what you guys think about that. This has been Will Crispy. And that's it. The Christmas Spoken. Take care.